on an island in the Caribbean. It is a day much like any other. It is also the last routine day many of these people will enjoy for some time to come. That evening, the news report brings warning of the disaster that will soon affect the entire country. This is your weather report and thank you for joining us. As we take a look at the Caribbean satellite photograph, we see our latest tropical storm, Gilbert. Gilbert is located at last... On the television screen, brightly lit colors announce the swirling winds and pounding rains rapidly heading toward land. The colors warn of a hurricane. This is the story of one such hurricane, Hurricane Gilbert, 1988. But it is also the story of all hurricanes and what can be done to prepare for them. Preparedness is key because natural disasters cannot be prevented. Even predicting when and where the storm will hit is not accurate. There are problems to do with hurricane forecasting and prediction, which the public needs to appreciate in that the hurricane forecasts are not um, accurate down to the very last detail. And hurricanes are capable of erratic behavior, sudden strengthening and sudden weakening, or sudden movements away from the precise track. Therefore, it means that the public itself needs to be aware of the uncertainties in the forecast and prepared to make rapid adjustments. On September 9th, Gilbert was a tropical depression off Guadeloupe. Within days, its 160 mile an hour winds marched through portions of the Cayman Islands, Cuba, the Dominican Republic, and Haiti. On the 12th, its full force slammed Jamaica. On the 14th, Mexico. In its wake, hundreds of thousands of people lost their homes and their way of life. Some lost their very lives. Of all the island nations damaged by Gilbert, Jamaica was hit the hardest. A path of destruction cut from one end of the country to the other. An awesome reminder of what can happen to any Caribbean island in any given year. Both directly and indirectly, a hurricane can set hard-gained national development back for years. It can cripple resources critical to maintaining a normal standard of life and health. Resources such as power, water, shelter, agriculture, transportation, and communications. A hurricane of Gilbert's strength will invariably strain the healthcare system of any island nation. Some people will die, many will be injured, and many more will be exposed to health risks linked to the storm. Even after the worst of the storm has passed, health care problems persist. Help does not come for a, a day or so, even from within the country, because the roads are blocked, they have to be cleared, transportation has to be gathered, and so on. And so people really have, for the first few hours, to depend on their own initiative. At the same time, healthcare personnel can be hampered in their efforts to treat the population. Nurses and doctors can have as much difficulty reaching their stations as their patients do. Winds of over 120 miles an hour can rip the roof off a hospital as easily as it can an aluminum-covered home. And the loss of beds in a hospital can number in the hundreds. In Jamaica alone, 90% of the health facilities suffered damage. Two hospitals in particular were badly devastated. The Princess Margaret in the east and Lucy Hospital in the west were badly damaged. Their bed counts were more than halved after the hurricane. And some of the big facilities were quite seriously damaged as well. The Kingston Public Hospital, Connor Regional Hospital, and the University Hospital were seriously affected, both in terms of their bed count 
and in terms of other services like the routine outpatient services and specialist consultation services. Electricity, water, shelter, transportation, adequate equipment and supplies, all are necessary for health professionals to do their jobs. Restoring these resources to the hospitals and health facilities must be a priority. Healthcare officials can also make their own plans for coping with the emergency. Plans must be drawn up, tested, and understood by all healthcare personnel long before the winds over the Atlantic begin their next furious journey. Health facilities didn't really have a mass casualty situation. It was the public health aspects that we had to monitor very closely because there was no electricity supply, water supply, and the environmental health situation in general needed close monitoring. The long-term effects on public health are complex. They involve the entire ecology. Much of that ecology revolves around water. Even on an island surrounded by water, most safe drinking water is dependent on treatment plants. Plants, in turn, dependent on electricity. Power was quickly restored to this plant, but the storm waters from Gilbert washed mud, silt, and debris into the filtering systems, causing additional delay before they were once again operational. The storm waters may also become an indirect cause of disease. Exposure to untreated sewage or contaminated water resulting from the broken pipes leads to increased incidence of fecal-borne diseases in the population. The floods and rains also create new ponds, breeding grounds for disease-carrying mosquitoes. Water, a threat when brought by hurricane, and yet it is essential for human survival. Where possible, water treatment plants and distribution mains and pipes should be located inland or on high ground. Water supplies must also be checked and stocked before the hurricane warning. Once the warning is given, those who live in vulnerable housing or along low-lying coastal areas should be evacuated. Once the hurricane passes, there will probably be a need for emergency water distribution systems. Equally important, will be ensuring water quality, thus the need to chlorinate before distribution. Shortly after Gilbert touched land, the myriad problems caused by lack of power were soon apparent. Normal channels of communication were immediately cut off. Water pumps run by electricity stopped. Cars and trucks could no longer get fuel at filling stations. Electricity is needed to pump the gas. Refrigerated food supplies spoiled. Equipment in operating rooms no longer functioned. Practically every critical service depends on power to work. Even when the electricity from huge power stations is lost, healthcare, food, water and fuel must continue to be available. Thus, preparation dictates that all critical facilities have a generator and someone who knows how to maintain and safely operate this machine. Food, shelter, the two primary elements man needs to survive in his environment. The statistics from Jamaica show how easily, how quickly, Gilbert devastated these elements. In agriculture, the poultry industry was first declared a complete loss. The banana crop, vegetable crop, cocoa crop, wiped out. But later assessments showed that food was available to the population while more serious problems persisted. I think in general the, the dislocation in terms of unemployment by the manufacturing sector being out of operation, the whole um, you know, elimination of exports from the agricultural sector is another very serious problem. And I think at this stage, we now realize that the response and damage assessment has had very critical economic implications. In housing, 
the numbers were severe. One out of five people had their home damaged or destroyed. In low-income areas, the loss was a staggering 60%. At the high point of the hurricane, we had up to 800,000 people sheltered. And of course, some of the shelters, due to poor infrastructure, were destroyed. Later on, the shelter population dropped dramatically as emergency restoration increased. But we, at the high point, we had significant shelter populations without the necessary support in terms of bedding, utensils, etc to maintain these, these shelters. Immediately after the event, persons were in a, a number of persons were in a state of shock. The dislocation caused by lack of shelter or being removed from one's normal area of activity also created um, you know, depression among a number of individuals at all levels of the society. Preparation for a hurricane begins with effective communication. Hurricane Chester, which has been under watch for several days, is now on a direct path to Jamaica. It will severely affect the local Communication that should take place ahead of time, on three levels, among health agencies, from the government to the population, and with the outside world. It is not enough that any local health agency have its own emergency plans. Because resources are limited and needs interrelated, agencies must collaborate on their own plans to ensure that coverage of some areas is not omitted while redundant in other areas. A variety of relief agencies are available to provide assistance, but they will only be as effective as the information given them. Again. Preparation is key. Many needs can be predicted ahead of time. Repairing damaged facilities such as hospitals, water treatment and sewage plants, and replacing water ruined stock. Other needs can't be assessed until the storm has passed. Once health officials determine and request what is needed, it is then important to maintain a registry of arriving donations to ensure their proper distribution. Just as important, however, is to know and communicate what is not needed. Health professionals should be aware that for political reasons, their governments may stress certain needs that are not vital to the detriment of those that are. And well-meaning relief organizations will often send supplies that are inappropriate to the situation, foods that are foreign to the population and will be rejected, medicine improperly labeled or without instructions, too many volunteers trained in the wrong areas who must be fed and sheltered themselves. Many agencies sent us volunteers before we were ready to receive them. And it meant that a major call was placed on our limited housing resources and limited food supplies. And the, capacity, the worst hit communities were where all the volunteers wanted to go. And when we tried to explain that our strategy was to keep our major institutions functioning so that we would be putting volunteers to some extent, not necessarily in the worst hit areas, but in areas in which they could relieve the pressure on the regular staff, people became a little upset because they wanted to be where the action was. To the casual observer, the problems caused by a hurricane require short range solutions. Restore the power, repair the water and sewage plants, rebuild the homes, disinfect to prevent disease. The trained healthcare official, however, sees long-range problems as well and knows prevention and preparedness offer the most promising solutions. For example, when this hospital was damaged, the short-range solution would have been simply to put plastic sheeting over the roof, but the long-range solution would call for its repair using new materials or construction techniques that will prevent its destruction in a future hurricane. Another example, months after a hurricane has passed, the economy may still be depressed by the loss of agricultural exports, and monies needed to restore public health and other vital services may be lacking. By focusing on long-range planning, however, Relief organizations could be called upon for supplies that can be used by healthcare officials in the future, 
supplies like mattresses, bandages, syringes, mosquito control equipment, and the like. To the complacent, Gilbert was another hurricane, another country, another year, and next year would bring the same. But next year doesn't have to be the same. Preparedness is our most potent weapon. How best to prepare? By learning from the experience of past hurricanes such as Gilbert and respecting the full force of nature's power.